powerful reception. I believe that this weekend will mark a turning point in our lives. I thought you and many would be better than that. Praise God. Are you expectant this weekend? We are told that expectation is the mother of manifestation. Are you expectant this weekend? By the time we are done this weekend, you look for that fear. That fear will not be anywhere again. In the name of Jesus. I'm so glad um, to be part of this powerful convention. I've been following, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed with what God is doing with our diamond ladies. And I'm so proud of you all. I'm so proud of you all. Hallelujah. I want to honor and appreciate my wife, your pastor. Thank you so much, Pastor Rob. Please appreciate. Hallelujah. Of course, you know, I love you very seriously. Hallelujah. Okay, I, I, please, all the pastors, uh, the ladies, pastors' wives also, please come and um, sit with your pastor. If you guys, so that if I look there, I will see you guys. Appreciate God for your pastors as they come. Please, all of you, can you do that fast? Keep clapping for them. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow, wow. In the middle of the man, 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 in the middle of the and also expectations. Thank you, Lord, for this weekend. Thank you for you are the one that have called these single ladies to come before you, that you may equip, transform, and change their lives and their destinies. No man can do these things except the Lord be with him. We ask for the move of your spirit. We ask for the operations and manifestations of your spirit. Let your word come with power, yet with simplicity, that even a baby can understand. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you for the open heaven. Thank you. Let your name be glorified. We magnify your name and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. 
Can I, can I hear a victorious amen? amen? One more time, jam those your hands together as you give him praise. You may be seated. I believe I have a few minutes, you know, looking at my time. Um, but tonight, the theme of this meeting is face your fear. Um, it's a privilege for me to be opening the session for you because I also know that this weekend we have so many other um, anointed servants of God that will be speaking to you from tomorrow morning till the end of the program. Um, and we will be so privileged from tomorrow to have one of our senior pastors, Pastor Ifi Onaga, in the house. So, so it's gonna be it's gonna be the bomb. It's gonna be the bomb. Face your fear. When I saw this, I said this is powerful. Um, uh, this the 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 topic is not born in the flesh. I'm sure it's born in the spirit. So powerful, so powerful. I really pray that Holy Ghost will open our eyes in this direction because one of the greatest threats to life um, greatest threats to our destinies or accomplishing what God has called us to accomplish is fear am I communicating? I will need you to concentrate properly all the greatest limitations to us being who God has called us to be having what God has called us to have is fear so when we talk about facing our fear it's important that throughout this weekend, that you don't allow anything to distract you. God calls meetings for people. And it's possible that there are some people here, God has called this meeting for. You don't want anything that will distract you because, because the key to your, um, whatever has been an issue in your life, I'm, I'm sure will be delivered to you by the Holy Ghost. Fear. The antidote to fear is faith. The Bible says that faith uh, cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. So just as uh, 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 faith comes by hearing of God's word, I want you to also know that fear also comes by hearing. Am I, are we, am I communicating? Fear also comes by hearing. Hearing of evil reports. Hearing of bad news, hearing of unfavorable uh, lab results, okay? Hearing of one thing or the other, faith comes. And, fear, and faith, uh, just as faith also is the spirit, we will see all that. The Bible says that we haven't received the spirit of faith. So faith is a spirit. In the same way, fear is also a spirit. He said, for he has not given us the spirit of fear. So there's faith, fear is also what? A spirit. It can come. It can lay hold on someone. So just as we hear the word and faith will come, you can also hear some news and fear will come. And this weekend, we want to face that fear. We want to face that fear eyeball to eyeball and tell that fear, I am not backing down. Come on, am I communicating? In Mark chapter 5, verse 36, the story, of, I think from verse 35, Jesus was um, asked by a, a man to come to his house and pray for his daughter who was sick, very, very sick. And Jesus promised him, yes, I'm going to come. And he followed the man. But while he followed the man, uh, there was a, a kind of, a, a, if you call it, a, a, not destruction or interruption because the woman that had the issue of blood had to come in and touch him you know and get herself sorted that and Jesus was asking who touched me so it took a while for them to finish that ministration so why he was still talking from verse 35 he said why he spake they came from the ruler of Snagor's house certain so some servants of the man had to come and they said thy daughter is dead why troubles thou the master any further. Your daughter is dead. There's no need. There's no need to bring the man. Your daughter is dead. I don't know what they have told you. 
I don't know what they have told you. You know, people have different uh, worries in life. In school those days, as undergraduates, some of us at the time, we have the fear, will I even graduate? Yes. Sometimes it appears the load is too much. Sometimes it appears, will I ever graduate? Will I ever have money to do this one? I did chemical engineering. Sometimes some of the tests, some of the assignments, you're wondering, God, I need your help. There are different levels of fear. Am I communicating? No, I don't know whether I can even get uh, uh, third class. God, if I can get third class. Someone is even afraid. Who knows if I have missing results. Fear everywhere. Even as a single lady, it is possible they have told you, we, we saw a cyst in your womb or in your whatever. So you know, people have fear, even when they have not even entered marriage, they are wondering, will I ever conceive? If I get married, will I ever conceive? Will I ever get married? Who knows if I will have breast cancer? Who knows? You turn into some news and that news is bringing you fear. This weekend, even from tonight, you will look at that fear and you will speak to that fear. Praise God. He said, your daughter is dead. Why are you troubling the master? Leave him alone. There's no more. I mean, if she was still sick, he can do something. So what they are telling him is that this is not a hopeless situation. Have they given you a hopeless situation before? Have you looked into your life? Is it giving you hopelessness? He says he's, she is dead. She is no longer sick. It's not fever or headache. She is dead. Why are you troubling? But I'm not, I need to run fast this evening. The next verse, the Bible says, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, it made a great impact to me. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid only believe. In other words, Jesus quickly countered what he had. You don't wait. You don't wait as soon because words are powerful. Come on, am I communicating? He said as soon. Jesus did not wait both for him and for the man because what they tried to put there is to put fear in the man. To put so much doubt in the man. Yes, I've been there. We've had news that paralyzed us. We've had news that made me feel like, oh, this is the end. It's a spirit. You see those goose pimples. You see your hair standing up. You see all that. It is not a thing. It's a spirit. Come on, am I communicating? He said, but as soon as Jesus had it, he did not give them chance to keep explaining to the man. Should we take him to the take her to the mortuary or that? As soon as Jesus had it, Jesus turned to the man and says, "Be not afraid, only believe. Don't listen to them." So I tell my people sometimes there comes a time where you turn off the news. What's supposed to be news, channels news? I'm not talking about channels. I'm talking about channels that are bringing news. I talk, sometimes they give you it appears bad news sell small come on am I communicating sell small there are people who are experts in sending whatsapp the only time they send you messages and when, when they have bad news dead people's pictures people cut off people did this one people did this one you finish looking at those things even the little atom of faith that you had collapses. He said, fear not. You know why? First John chapter 4, the Bible says that fear is torment. Fear is torment. If you allow that spirit, is both torment, is also a crippler. It can cripple you. Many people have become victims of fear. Fear is the arresting agent of the devil. It's like the policeman of the devil. Before he enters a person's life and all that, he sends fear. If that fear can hold whoever is the victim, it opens door for other spirits to come in. 
there's a spirit of fear and there's also the spirit of infirmity. So, but fear goes ahead to arrest the victim and opens the door for the other spirits, whether it is infirmity or poverty or frustration or suicide. You know, you know, you know suicide is also a spirit. Am I complicating? It is fear. It is the fear that shows people hopelessness. Take your life. Why are you still living? Why is this one? People have become victims of fear. We saw this picture of the young lady last year that works in the bank in Lagos that took her life, drank poison in the bank as a staff and in the in the in the in the toilets of the of the of the bank and wrote was a note of all the things, how she is frustrated, how life has not been very fair, how her salary has not been increased, how I can't take it any longer, how this thing. That is a spirit. It entered and brought fear. What is the fear? It's showing her, my dear, there's no hope for you. You see, she could not see a year. She could not see two years ahead. Because she could not see three years ahead. What if in by next year, you marry a very rich man? She could not see that picture. She was only seeing the picture of herself working in the bank, not getting enough salary. They're giving her too much target to meet as a marketer. And therefore, I cannot take it. Fear is torment. And it's also a clipper. Many have become victims. You see, he has not given you the spirit of fear. He has not given you. It is not one of those things that God gave to us. A recreated uh, uh, child of God that has had the Holy Ghost. He says what he has given you, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power and of love and of what? A sound mind. That's why when you begin to have that strange spirit that is not part of this makeup, the, uh, 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 my God, I, 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 it is spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Any other thing is a stranger. When you begin to sense that strange spirit, you tell that spirit, you are trying to trespass. It is not part of my makeup. It's not part of what God has given me. Am I communicating? Because if you leave it, you see, you may have wonderful visions, wonderful ideas, wonderful, you know, some of you can even have the dreams, what God has shown you, where you're going to be. That you had a dream, even when God speaks to you, it does not come uh, automatically until you conquer this. Victims of fear. The people of Israel were in bondage because, because of their sin. So if you read the book of Judges, you see different people that have come to help them because due to their sin, God allows the enemies to oppress them. So one of those oppressors were the Midianites. For years, they were oppressing the people of Israel. For years, they could not even, you know, do their farming openly. They have to hide because these guys were in charge. God raised a man called Gideon, you know, after a while, so that he could be a deliverer. And God told him, raise an army, I'm now with you. Because they have, they have now repented. I'm going to give the Midianites into your hands. He raised an army of 32,000 men. He asked them, how many of you want to go to war? 32,000 able men, strong men came out. Came out to go to war with him. And God told him, the people that you have with you are many. That is Judges chapter 7 from verse 3. I want to bring out something there. He says to him, go to them in the morning. <laughs> now therefore, go proclaim in the ears of the people saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid. He didn't call any name. But these are the people that left their houses. We are going for ministry. We are going for this. The hand of God is upon us. This one, this one. God said to him, my friend, I know them. Because it's, you, you will think you have 32,000 soldiers. But you have no idea that many of them are victims and prisoners to fear. Proclaim in their ear. Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilad. So, if you are afraid, please return back tomorrow morning. To the surprise of Gideon, he says, 22,000 people left the camp. 
he did not pursue anybody. He only asked, whosoever is afraid, whosoever is fearful, if you know your heart is not in this thing. That's why, you see, because if their heart is, why God did that is that these guys may sabotage this war or this battle at the end of the day. Two cannot work together except they agree. God, God gives a vision that is bigger than your pastor's mind or gives than your leader and he can even share the vision. God wants us to do this. God wants us to do this. You see, sometimes people who are so afraid can sow seed of this God in the team. Nah, leave that thing. It's not possible. Leave that thing. It's not possible. Leave that thing. It's not possible. It cannot happen. It cannot happen. And they are everywhere. And they think they are speaking normally. They have no idea that a spirit has captured them. So you see, visions, even divine visions, even God ordained visions can be frustrated by that spirit if it is not handled. Speak to their hearing. Whoever is fearful, whosoever is afraid, let him return and depart. I'm sure he did not anticipate the outcome of that <laughs> procreation, uh, proclamation. He did not anticipate the outcome of that instruction. 22,000 left, leaving only 2,000 behind. Jesus was completely fearless. He didn't have panic attack. And it is that same spirit he has given unto us. John chapter 14 verse 27. He said, my peace I give unto you. My God. He said, my peace. Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not your own. My own peace. The kind of peace that Jesus had. The kind of peace that he had. Why there was so much storm and he was in the boat. The Bible said that he was sleeping in the boat, putting his head on the cushion. Why the, 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 the storm? There's a kind of peace he had that could make him to sleep in the midst of storm. So one of the things that he gave to me and he gave to you, he said, the peace I will, the peace I will live with you is my own kind of peace. Not as the word giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It's the peace I give unto you. It's the peace that I give unto you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me, Lord, to the rock. There are going to be times in your life, there are going to be times that things that cannot bring fear will come. As long as you're in this earth, things that will bring so much fear will come. Then it is time to look back again to that peace. The peace he gives is the peace that he operated with. Not as the word giveth. That's why in Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3, he said he will keep in perfect peace those whose heart has stayed on him. He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee. He said why? Because he trusted in thee. Peace is not the absence of storm. It's not the absence of trouble. It's not the absence of challenges. Peace is just the presence of God. When you know, we just know, there's a knowing in your heart that God is with me. Elohim is here with us. Say, we are not standing alone. When you have an idea that Elohim is standing with you, my God, my God, my God, my God. It is not getting easier in the world. It could be news of even hostility. The rice is now 100,000 a bag. Gary is now whatever. Yam is now. This one is now. And there are people who are even looking at, oh my God. Just like the woman in the Bible that says, this is the last what I have to eat. Me and my son and we will die. God never planned for you to die out of hunger. And you will not die out of hunger. Why? You see, your man is as poor as, as, as poverty. He will keep in perfect peace. Though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death. It's a shadow. He will keep. As I, Psalm 33. 
He said, though I walk through it, though I walk through it, have you been through it? The shadows of death is not movie. It's not cinema. It's a shadow full of fear. Shadows of death. Will I survive it? Will I come out? Will this one happen? Will this one not happen? Some even pregnant women and Ivan's too afraid to go to the theater because some Ivan are afraid that they will die. Some believe that they will not come out. Someone is going for a, a surgery, uh, appendicitis, or whatever. He starts writing his will because he believes that he's going to die. <laughs> oh, he's here with us. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil he is not saying that there are no evil he is only saying I will fear no evil the valley of the shadow of death is not a place to watch movie it's a very scary place the shadow of death he said but I will fear no evil for thou art with me. You see, Elohim is there. You are with me. You are with me. You are with me. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. I will go through it. I will go through it. That is why in war, and I've said this thing before, in warfare, three things can either happen, or you know, any of them could happen. The first thing that could happen is advancing, you know. So, it's either you are advancing to face your enemy in war. That's the first thing. To be the advancing team. To face them. That's why they say that the most boring type of football is defense. When people will just keep, they don't go for attack, they just stay back. In most of the cases, they even, they will lose the match. When you see a match like that, you say, man, let this man go. They will never cross their line. They are all defending throughout 90 minutes. So in war, it's either you are advancing. And this is where even God has called us to be. He must be the advancing army. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 48, the Bible talked about David and Goliath. In that place, my God, he says, And when Goliath lifted up himself to come to David, David ran towards him. Give me that scripture, First Samuel chapter 17, verse 48. Please, you need to be fast with your system. Verse 48. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose. Are you seeing that? When the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David, that is, hasted, means he hurried up. He said, there's no time to waste. He hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. You are looking at a so-called giant, big figure, heavy, big. And this is David, in times of comparison, is too so small. And such a being is coming to you. The expected thing that you should start running. But David looked at him, said, the time has come. Let's finish this game. He ran towards him. It's an advancing army. Advancing army. What have you been running away from? God did not call you to run. Face your fear. That great was the fear. It is time to face it. You've been running, and that's why he's been pursuing you. Some of you, kakatakala, brother, kanda liya da la buku da la da, ale brother kunda la baka kusu da la ya da da da. That thing you've been running away from your dream. No more. If it comes back again, you will turn and face that thing. And that will be wondering what happened to you. He said, I just came back from a convention. Face your fear. Can I hear a big amen? Yeah. How long will they be missing you up? You keep running. Why are you running? That is why. You can see the enemy, as long as he could see that you could run, he takes advantage of that. Keep running. Whatever it is that is pursuing you, whatever it is. 
some time ago in, the, in this church, we have a meeting, we finished, you know, I think it was a prayer uh, program and all that. One of the ladies gave a testimony here. She, she, she sells in the main market. She has, she has a shop. He said, because for a long time, for a very long time, it's been dry, no customer, nobody. And she's been wondering, what is happening to me? What's happening to my business? You know, that kind of thing. Okay, well, let's be managing. What is happening? So we finished the meeting. He said, she went home and she got a dream. In that vision, she came to her shop and a madman was sitting right in front of the shop. Nobody's entering. And the madman turned and, and pursued her. She ran. But after a while, she wondered, why am I running? This is my shop. How long will I run? He said, she turned and went back to that man. And beat, 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 tore him into pieces. And, 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 and the madman ran away. She opened her shop. She went to shop the next day physically. People were trooping to buy things. She gave a testimony. He said, he said she is a wonder. You have no idea that the supernatural controls the natural. You are giving it away as an excuse, no customer. But other people are selling. Why do you think people go to native doctors to make sham to sell? But you're a Christian and you're keeping quiet. Oh, 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 oh. All this why one mad dog or spirit has been sitting, occupying the front of her shop. But that day, she said she ran. But something said, why are you running? And that something is the Holy Ghost. You don't run. You turn and face your fear. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are carrying deity. You are carrying God and you are running away. But the man that, that's what, that is what David saw. That the man that was coming against him is an uncircumcised Philistine. What it means to uncircumcised means the man had no covenant with God. What it means is that the man, that God is not with him. And he's wondering, how can I be running from a man that God is not with? When uh, Goliath arose, David rose in a haste and ran to meet him. But the second thing they do in war, which is not very, upper, uh, very um, wonderful, is to retreat. To retreat is to turn back and run. So you see, you know your enemy is either you are advancing or you are retreating out of fear. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. Quickly, quickly, quickly. 10 verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. He said, now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Please give me message translation. The just shall live by faith, but anyone who is right with me thrives on loyal trust. Look at that. If he cuts and runs, I won't be very happy. <laughs> God is not happy when you run on, over something you should be facing. We are not part of the retreating army. In King James, go back, you come back to the message. He says, uh, my soul, if any man draw back my soul shall have what? No pleasure in him. Verse 39. He said, but we are not. We are not of them. I can't see them here. We are not of them that draw back unto perdition. I don't see the diamond ladies as those that draw back. We are those, my God. No, we are of them that believe to the saving of our soul. We don't turn back when there's a challenge. We don't backslide because somebody sometimes. We don't backslide because we lost a job. We don't backslide because anything happened. No, we are not in the camp that draw back. Am I communicating? Give me back message translation. That's a retreating army. But we are not quitters. Who lose out? Is there any quitter here? Is there any quitter here? How are you quitting in life? We don't quit. You don't take your life because you lost 20 million, 100 million. You don't lose because you lost a relationship. You don't quit church because a maker left you. And that's the truth. You tie your life to a relationship and somebody goes mad because they say you lost a relationship. That's not the spirit that God has given you. Because if you have a proper interpretation, you are telling yourself, obviously, it's not the per person for me. Someone better is coming. Come on, am I communicating? I said, someone better is coming. He said, oh no, we will stay with it and survive. 
trusting all the way. I say you will stay with it and survive. You say, what can take us away from the love of God? What can chase us away from the love of God? What can pursue us from the love of the Father? What can pursue us from the fellowship that we have with God? He said, nothing. We are not quitters. We don't quit because they gave us a lab result. We don't quit. We don't quit because something unpleasant happened. No. We are not among those that quit. The third thing they do in war is negotiating. But let me begin to round up. Negotiating, you know. We don't negotiate with terrorists. We don't, we, we don't negotiate with the devil. It's not part of the thing that God has called us to do. God has called us to stand. Stand. Is he having done all but to stand? Having done all but to stand. You see, everyone has an area where you feel inadequate and you are afraid of the unknown. The devil could throw in panic attack, panic fears. The feelings of fear, the feelings of panic comes upon you. But it is time to make your stand. Hallelujah. It is time to know. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 23. Let me just see how can. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 23. Please give me a message translation. He said, you will travel safely. You will neither tire nor trip. Can I hear believing amen? amen? You will travel safely. Somebody's wondering. People are afraid if they enter flight and they say, hey, we're dying. Some people can't even afford. You see, what if I enter transport now, I will die? What if whatever they will kidnap me? What if you can't even go out? Because the news of kidnapping, the news of accident, the news of robbery is everywhere. Fear has paralyzed you. That even when you know you're supposed to make a journey, it is fear. Who knows? You have no idea. People have even been, been in their house and they fell in the toilet, slipped, and they died. Death can happen anywhere. Come on, am I communicating? He said you will travel safely. I declare God's word over you. In anywhere you go, anywhere you travel, I say you will travel safely. In the name of Jesus. He said you will neither tire nor trip. Look at the next verse quickly. You will take afternoon naps without a worry. You will enjoy a good night's sleep. In the name of Jesus. There are some people that can't enjoy their sleep. They are afraid to go to bed because when to go to bed, the spirit of uh, incumbus or whatever, who comes to sleep with them in sleep, comes. No. You can look at that demon. I am not married to you. You can't touch my body anymore. Whether physical or spiritual, I, I, ref, I refuse you to mess my life up. You can't go to bed because you're wondering if I go to bed. There are people who can't go to bed. No, the Bible says you will enjoy a good night's sleep. If you have not been enjoying that, I declare to you from tonight, you will enjoy a good night's sleep. I say you will sleep like a baby. In the name of Jesus. Look at verse 3. Quickly. Over the next verse, sorry. No need to panic over alarms or surprises. Or predictions that doomsday is just around the corner. No need to panic. No need to panic. They sell lies to people. They panic. He said, no need to panic. It's a lie of the devil. Before the election, it appears we will not even be alive by now. Some even gave too many visions. They saw God showed them how this one happened. People who are going to die, they will kill everybody. Whether God showed them or not, we are still here. Because God always have a remnant. Come on, am I communicating? What is the panic button? What is that panic attack they have told you? Nobody from your house ever gets married. You have looked and you have seen all your sisters, all your aunties, they are all still at home. What is the panic they've told you? Nobody ever in this house ever has children. They die at childbirth. What is the panic they've told you? Uh, nobody does this one. Nobody does this one. Yes, if nobody ever does it, you will be the first one to do it. I say you will be the first to break that jinx. In the name of Jesus. I am not just like any other person. I am not just like any other person. He said, glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of Zion. There's a family fear. They tell you, this sickness comes to the family. 
this one is in the family. No. I have been put into a new family. I, I, am I complicating? I've been. He said, you, he said, what's that song again? You have, uh, I'm born into a family. I've been born again. <laughs> I've been born to a family. Uh-huh. Hallelujah, you are so slow. So, we, you, we've been born into a family of God. Am I communicating? There is no fear anymore. There's no prediction. Two of you, what is keeping a marriage ban? I, I, I know of my brethren, that's some years back when I was in Abuja. The young man wanted to marry this young girl, but he took the family swore he will never. Why? Because the prophet prophesied to them that this guy, if he marries this girl, he will be poor. They will die out of poverty. One prophet somewhere is a very good sound Christian. Is a Korean, you know, engineer that has Korean. Okay, that's a certification. You know, is a, a civil engineer. Okay, and then he's going to also financial. I mean, a sound guy. The girl's father will beat her up, tore her clothes, do all sorts of things. I said, Maga, is a battle. You will take prayer, sacrifice, and all that. And after it took two, two, three years, they allowed them to marry. Today, they're happily married. They've located to UK, and they're doing very well. But there's the prophecy. There's the prophecy. The mother will cry. This boy wants to kill me. You know why? I was see her said, if he marries, what they have? We say, who says the thing? And it comes to pass when the Lord has not spoken. My, 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 my mother's uh, prophet said do whatever said anything that they say that is not in line with your belief in God's word cancel it the Bible says that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper he said that but every tongue that shall rise against you who shall condemn he said you shall condemn that's how to deal with your fear any tongue any judgment they have given that this one will happen this one will happen you see because Satan has seen that this girl is going to have a very good... And it's not the first. It's not the first. We have also seen that happen to one of our pastors also. In this particular case, in this particular case, the, 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 the girl's family, they live in the east. And then the mother's sister that lives in the north, he said in their, in, the, in their church or their ministry where they are praying, the man of God, they prophesied, your sister's daughter, the first daughter, he wants to marry, that man he wants to marry. It's not, the, it's not the husband. He will die or he will do whatever. She traveled from north to the east and came and told the sister. Look at what the prophet said. And the sister, that's the girl's mother now, carried herself, hit on the floor. He said, it, I said it, I said it, I said it. Today, these people are married. And that family is saying, thank God, this is their best in law. Everything good that's happened to them is happening to that man. But somebody prophesied, who is, who, is, who is that devil? We blind the lies, the eyes of that devil. In the name of Jesus. So he says, look at verse, verse 26. Let me see verse 26. He says, why? Because God will be right there with you. He will keep you safe and sound. I prophesy, God will keep you safe and sound. God will keep you safe and sound. In the name of Jesus. How do you overcome fear in 10 minutes? I close. Number one. Mm. To deal with fear. I just give you three points. Shatila. Mm. Pray in the Holy Ghost for 30 seconds. Shababa da liya da la kunda la baba ba da jeda. Yelele baba. Let your voice, because you see, in this meeting, your tongue will be very, very light. It should not be very difficult for you to pray at any time. It should not be difficult for you to pray at any time. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Ah, yale baba ba jeda. Yelele baba ba kunda liya da la baba. Shatele baba da kunda la bayada. Libra da la baba shi de le bobo kunda la baba de le bada. 
Mambrada le baba basha da la baba shete le ba. Yele le 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 bobo shinda la la buku bodo lo bada la ba. Sha ba 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 kia da la ba da ke inda la ba 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 da. You see, see, build up your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you build up faith, and that faith will drown fear. Oh, that second small prayer in the Holy Ghost. Hey, I la ba shati ya da la ku, zimbrada la ke ya da la ba na la ku. Yeah, shaba ba ba di le ku ba da la ba da la ba shi da la ba. Oh, hallelujah! How to overcome fear? Number one, turn away from intentional sin. Turn away. Turn away from in, I have to put that intentional for a reason. Not that somebody made a mistake or something, but somebody who knows and is living, dwelling in sin. Sin removes courage from you. Sin removes. So we are talking about facing your fear. You cannot face your fear living in sin. And that's why, you know, at everything, at every time, you, one, you become a victim. The devil is expert in guilt. So he knows that once he attacks you, he hey, say, hey, my friend, you cannot attack me, I know you. You know? Proverbs 28, verse 1. Come on, come on. He said, the wicked runneth when no man pursues him. <laughs> the wicked flee when no man pursue it but the righteous are as bold are bold as a lion it's the wicked that word wicked there means the sinner sin removes courage so the ability to face to tell the devil hey you come out but I mean she, you know he has your data with this abortion up and down with this living in sin up and down. You see, the boldness to stand. No. The righteous, the righteous are bold as a lion. Give me a, a, a message translation here. The wicked are edged with guilt. That is the issue. You know this issue of guilt is a torment. Don't give the devil a foothold. The Bible says in Ephesians, don't give him a foothold. Giving him a foothold means you are giving him, uh, what's the word now? You are giving him a, a platform to manifest. Jesus said, the priest of this world cometh and he finds nothing in me. You are, giving, you are the one giving the devil the platform. You are giving him the, what is called the advantage. How do you give him advantage? By living in sin, intentionally. He can't do anything. He knows. He knows. The wicked are edgy with guilt. Ready to run off even when no one is after them. You see the problem? Honest people are relaxed and confident. Bold as lion. Bold as lion. Honest people, oh, they are so relaxed. They are not moved. They just had a wonderful devotion. They know that God is with them. But the sinner, just like Adam, Adam, where are you? He's running. He's hiding. God is asking him, who told you you are naked? Who told you? Have you eaten that thing? Have you eaten that thing? Have you lost your innocence? Have you lost your innocence? Why are you, why are you edgy? Why are you running? Why are you not bold enough to stand and resist? The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. Why can't you resist him? What happened? You say, I ate the apple. You say, whoa, 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 whoa. I, 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 I had you coming. Normally when he hears God coming, he also comes. The Bible says that he has fellowship every evening with God. But this particular evening, God came and he was running. You say, why? What happened to you? He said, I am naked. Who told you you are naked? 
I pray to God that you understand who you are. You have Satan knows that you are a dangerous warrior. Satan knows that when you keep yourself, one of the greatest threats to the devil is the prayer of a of a, a, a warrior princess. You people here people talking about the prayer of my grandmother, the prayer of my mother. You have no idea how your prayer can be so effective. That's why he will do any and everything to stop you from praying. Come on, am I communicating? You think you are enjoying life. You think that you are enjoying life. You have no idea that you are giving him over advantage. So when they say there's a lab result, there's a tumor in the breast, you want to pray. But certain tells you, if you try it, and then you keep quiet. And when you keep quiet, he now allows infirmity to enter. Come on, am I communicating? Remove, there's no advantage in sin. There's no advantage. The second point is adequate knowledge. How to overcome fear. Adequate knowledge of God's word. Adequate knowledge of God's word. You see, if you don't have God's word in you, you're going to be also a victim. You will not know. In Proverbs 24, verse 5, quickly. 24, verse 5. Proverbs 24, verse 5. It says, A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. A man of knowledge. A man of knowledge increases strength. A man of... When we talk about man here, talking about woman being both man and woman. So what will increase your strength is knowledge. He said, you shall know, John chapter 8 verse 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You see, as I began to read the scriptures for you, your eyes is open. You say, wow. You see that scripture? Because you see, there's a bit, I, I was upon a time I, you know, after my marriage and I'm, I, things were so hard. I was praying and, and, and opened the scripture and I saw one scripture. I stayed on it for one month. I was screaming and I was shouting. It became a turning point in my life. I was screaming where God was talking to us. He says, a righteous man does not go through this. God helps him. To, I, 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 God, is this in the scripture? You have no idea that certain things have been written concerning you in the scripture. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make, not said, it shall make you free. That is how you stay free from always going from deliverance because the truth of God's word you know will make you face that devil. Eyeball to eyeball. It's the knowledge of God's word. Let me give you like, okay, Psalm 27. Let me show you, you know, powerful scripture. Psalm 27, quickly. From verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You see, we, there's a, a way you can be going through certain things and your eyes open to this scripture. Suddenly, courage will come to you. You see, the Lord is my strength. Who shall I fear? Look at verse 2. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me, to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Verse 3. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Okay, look at, go back to verse 2 and give it a, a message translation. He said, when Vanda hordes ride down, ready to eat me alive, those buries and tufts fall flat on their faces. Verse 3. When besieged, I am calm as a baby. When all hell breaks loose, I am collected and cool. Hey, they said, they said, they said, they said. You're quiet. It is the knowledge. Why is somebody calm and this person restless? He has no idea what this person knows. So you see people in the same flight, the same uh, uh, news, the same mayday, mayday. And that person is shouting, 
screaming and all that. So that person is just calm. It's the same thing. It's the same situation, but different reaction. It's this different reaction. Why? There's the knowledge. In Psalm 34, verse 7, he said, The angels of the Lord encamp around them that fear him. Somebody knows this. God's angel sets up a circle of protection around us while we pray. <laughs> you see, why we pray? You see, why the man says, I will pray, oh, I will pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. Mm. I will pray. I will pray. We're about to pray. I will pray. Oh, I will pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. He said, God's angel sets up a circle of protection around us while we pray. You have no idea. King James says, the angels of the Lord encamp around. It is the knowledge of God's word. When you begin, that's why if you don't read the Bible, if you don't study your scripture, you will always be at edge. Imagine you use this one to do money devotion. Imagine you spend time to do study on a state 30 minutes and you are praying and suddenly you understand what the Bible is saying. The angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fears him and he delivered them no wonder in 2 Kings chapter 6 we saw the story of Elisha <laughs> from verse 15 the Bible said the armies of the Syrians surrounded them his servant uh, what's his name again Gehazi came out in the morning and he saw they have been surrounded by the armies, armies of Syrians. He began to shout, what do we do, my father? Alas, my master, how shall we do? That's the scripture. How shall we do? When the master came out, there was no panic. There was no fear. Because there was something he knew that this boy does not know. The difference is knowledge. Pastor says, blindness is what causes us of negative things. When your eyes cannot see when you have no idea what God has planned for you. When you have no idea. He says the things that you see are temporal. But the things that we don't see are permanent. You are looking at the things that you can see. But you have no idea. The, 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 the young man was looking at the armies he could see. He had no understanding of the scripture. Psalm 34 verse 7. That the angels of the Lord encamp around. So Elisha had that understanding. Go back to where I'm reading. Elisha said, Lord... Open the eyes of this man. Open the eyes, I pray. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Lord, open the eyes. Take 30 seconds. The Lord, open my eyes. Just you know, pray. You see, because if you don't see. Pastor say, if you cannot see, you cannot have it. Ask God, open my eyes. In this convention, in this summit, in this, in this, in this face the fear, open my eyes. What is that thing blinding your eyes that is making you think that your life is in danger? You have seen the armies of the Syrians, but you have not seen the angels of God. You have seen the problem, but you have not seen the solution. Come on, pray for yourself. Let God open my eyes. Open. Elisha had to pray for the servant. He said, Lord, open the eyes of this boy. Open his eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. And when the eyes opened, he saw that day is a day that are with us. <laughs> they that are with us are much more than they that are with them. Knowledge. And the third and the last as we close, is speaking. How do you face your fear? Speaking. There is a spirit of faith and that spirit speaks. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13, he said, we having received the spirit of faith. There's a spirit of faith. There's a spirit of faith. And one of the major characteristics of that spirit is that it speaks. We having, having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. 
we also believe and therefore speak. When Goliath spoke and threatened David, David didn't close his mouth, but opened it and responded. You must learn to be a speaking believer. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 42, and that's how we're going to pray. Chapter 17, verse 42. Quickly, quickly, quickly. The Bible says, And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him. That is, he looked down on him. For he was but a youth. You know, some people think that, that you being a very fine girl, a very you know, slim person, that you don't have the power. You don't need more to cast out the devil. You don't need a man's voice ah, to cast out the devil. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Come on, am I complicated? So he looked down on David because he was very young and very handsome. He said, this one, you know, because David was never a soldier. He has not gone through military school and all that. So he looked as if he was just like nobody. Look at the next verse, quickly. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staffs? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. So he opened his mouth and used jars, cursed David by his gods. Don't close your mouth when people begin to speak certain things to you. Look at the next verse, quickly. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Yes. Then David said, that's where I like it. When he has finished speaking, David said, so the question is, what are you saying? They have told you this. They have told you this. You, what are you saying? I shall not die. They have told you this. They have told you this. What are you saying? Ah, I will have a wonderful family. What are you saying? My results will be so powerful. What are you saying? My business is going to flourish. David opened his mouth and said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Look at the next verse. So he told him what he would do to him. He said, This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. There is a God in Israel. Look at verse 47. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into my hands. What are you saying? What are you saying? Goliath has spoken. The enemy has spoken. I got a dream. When you have a dream that is very bad, God get up and use your mouth to cancel it. He said, they did this one to me. Said, no, 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 no. You can cream your dream. You can speak into your life. You can be your, 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 your own prophet that can declare. Even though place of a pastor or prophet is very important but first of all what are you saying the angels of God are listening hearkening to the words of your command Isaiah chapter, eight, chapter 10 uh, chapter 8 verse 10 he says God commanded me chapter 8 chapter 8 verse 10 quickly he said take counsel together and it shall come to naught speak the word and it shall not stand for God is with us so he's speaking take counsel he said, they are conspiring against me in the office. They are conspiring against me in this place. They are guarding against me against Omona. He said, take counsel together. It shall come to nothing. Your meeting for me will not stand. Come on, am I communicating? I don't need to be in that meeting. I don't need to be there. But I can declare that once you gather against me, it shall come to naught. He said, speak the word against me. It shall not stand. Why? For God is with us. I say, God is with you, my friend. You must learn to speak. Speak when you face your fear. Open your mouth and speak. Whatever it is, no matter how big it is, as a great, you speak. When there's no speaking, there's no killing. It takes the word to kill. Verse 11. Come on, come on. He said, for the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand. And they instructed me that I should not walk in the way of these people. 
saying, verse 12, say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this book shall say a confederacy. Neither fear you their fear, nor what? Be afraid. Don't fear their fear. Don't allow people to put their fear on you. We are dying. We are killing. We are hungry. We, 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 we. Separate yourself from that we. Am I communicating? He said, fear not their fear. Fear not their fear. Every woman is 50% susceptible to cervical cancer. Every man is, must have a prostrate. Every this one will have. There's a remnant that God preserves. Come on, am I communicating? He said, every one. Because the same thing, the news can be very frightening. It can be very frightening. He said, no, 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 no. The Lord spake unto me. The Lord instructed me. The Lord commanded me. Stop, stop putting yourself in the yoke. So once you are 30 years, you cannot marry. Once you are 35 years, it will be very difficult. Once you are whatever. No, no, no. My case is different. Am I communicating? He said, say you not a confederacy to all them to whom these people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Why? Verse 13, quickly. Oh, Shakati Adalaba. Go back. There's a place where it says, when men shall say there's a casting down. He said, what you should be saying is that there's a lifting up. When there's a casting down, come and stand on your feet as we pray in the next five minutes. Everybody stand quickly. Oh, I need something. I will pray. If I don't pray. Satan will make me so weak. Oh, I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. Oh, I will pray. If I don't pray. Satan will make me so weak. I will pray. Open your mouth and pray the Holy Ghost just for the next one minute. As you pray the Holy Ghost. Let your faith begin to build up. You are about to speak. You are about to speak. Shakapa kata. Le brada la baba kuna la kiada la bana. Le brada la ba. Le kakata kuku pakata yada la ba. Le brada la bada kuna liada la ba. Le brada la ko katia. Le brada la baba shite le ko. Le kakata ko kapa da la ba. Child of God, lift up your voice. He said, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. I will feel it. I will feel it. <laughs> oh, Shakaya da la ba. Ye ka ba 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 shata. Le brada. Ye kata koda. Le brada kata koda. Le brada kata kata kata. Le brada kaka shata kia da la. Le ba 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 koda. Le kada la ba ba shide le koda. Satan will make mess of me. Oh, hey, haya ba 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 ba. Hey, haya ba 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 ba. Hey, shelele, haya ya ya ya. Child of God, get ready, get ready. We are the advancing army. We don't retreat. We are not of them that run back from challenges. We don't run back. We don't run. We don't run. No, 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 no. Come on, build up yourself. Oh, where are the warrior princesses? Where are the warrior princesses? Lift up your voice. Hey, Satan is afraid of your prayer. That devil is afraid of your prayer. That devil is afraid of your prayer. Open up your mouth. Hey, Awake, 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 put on strength. Awake, awake, put on strength. Awake, awake, put on strength. Begin to speak. Begin to speak. Face your fear. Face your fear. Face your fear.
close your koroyat and begin to speak whatever you are afraid of whatever demon you are afraid of whatever sickness lift up your voice and begin to address them begin to address them begin to address them oh David began to speak David said to Goliath you come against me with spear and with shavering but I come against you today I come against you today in the name of the Lord today I will cut off your head today I will feed your carcass to the birds of the air today Speak, speak, speak. Address that mountain. What is that mountain before the river bear? Speak, oh thou mountain. What is that glorious? What is that fear? What is that enemy? Oh, total of God. Total of God. Amazon, you are a soldier in the army. Lift up your voice and begin to shoot. Lose yourself. Lose yourself. In the name of Jesus, Kapaka. Every demonic force, every entity, every foul spirit that have disturbed you before now. Whatever mountain, whatever fear, whatever challenge. Child of God, look at that devil, eyeball to eyeball, and begin to command. Hey, hey, hey. Something is happening. Something is happening. Ah, 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 ah. Fear of not getting married. Fear of cancer. Fear of failure. Fear, fear of backsliding. Speak to that fear. Speak to that fear. That fear is a spirit. Speak to that spirit. I bind you. I bind you. You spirit, my God. I am a baba kata. Le kata kopa kiyata kaya. Le braka tu kapaya. Speak to that fear. Oh my God. Papa kata. Makata kata. Don't close your mouth. I say, speak to that fear. You spirit of fear of, of disease, you spirit of fear of infirmity, you spirit of fear of backwardness, you spirit of fear of failure, I bind you tonight. I look at you eyeball to eyeball. You cannot do anything. For God is with me. My God is my God. I bring you down. I shoot you down. You demonic fear. I bring you down. You cannot operate in my family. You cannot operate in my family. Every wishes and wizard, every oppression against your family, shoot them down. It is time to face, face that enemy, face that your fear. Child of God, you have the authority, you have the authority, shoot them down. Succubus and incubus, you demonic spiritual husband, I shoot you down.
You can't come to me again in the night. I shoot you down in the name of Jesus. By the authority in the name of Jesus. Hey. Hey. This is your night of deliverance. This is your night of freedom. This is that night the Egyptians you saw before. You shall see them again no more in Akataka. and fall like lightning. Woo! Where are thou, O fear? Where are thou, O spirit of fear? I can do all things through him. I can do all things. I can have all things. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord, for the release of your spirit. Fear is gone. That spirit of fear, that is the torment, is gone. That yoke, that yoke of fear, of bondage, is gone. In the name of Jesus. Whatever had paralyzed our dreams, our destinies, our progress today, we declare freedom for everyone. May a new lease of life come upon you. May a new energy of the Holy Ghost come upon you. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray for some people as I'm led now. You know, the first point I made on how to overcome your fear as it turn away from intentional sin. But there's an antidote to that because guilt is a crippler. It can cripple you. First John chapter 2, it says, if we say that we have not sinned, chapter 1 verse 9, it says that we've deceived ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is just and righteous to forgive us all our sins. All of them. The blood of Jesus can make you clean and make you very bold to withstand anything, even tonight. If only you can come to his invitation, the blood is able to make you as white as snow. As we close our eyes to pray, please, if you know you need the blood to cleanse you, you know you need him to save you, you have not yet been saved, please come. 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 I want to pray for you. This is the best thing that can happen to you tonight. It's the best thing.
best thing that can happen to you. He said, the prayer of a sinner is abomination unto God. Please come. Leave your seat and come. Please come. There's a room on the cross for you. Forget about the guilt. I don't care about what you have done in the past. The blood of Jesus is able to wash you as brand new as, as snow. God does not consult your past to determine your future. But you must come to the invitation. God will give you a new, a new, a new page. A new, I, you know, oh my God, that power of the devil to withstand you will be broken if only you can come. There's enough room at the cross for you. Please come. Don't even negotiate with the devil. Don't think about it. Don't even contemplate it. Just come. Come, 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 come. Even if you have been in the church, I don't care. Even if you think that you've been born again before. But you know you are under the bondage of sin. As in, you know there's no boldness. You can't even do anything. Please come. Please, this way, please, this way. Please. I know in my spirit that God came for this meeting for you. Come, come to him. And tonight will be the end of that bondage to sin. That addiction, that addiction that removes boldness from you must be broken. The hand of God will come upon you and set you free. If the sun shall set you free, you shall be. Can they remove this basket, please? Are the cross for you? Oh my God. Me and there is still room for all. There is room at oh. the cross. When you come here, start crying to him. Don't look at anybody. Start crying. Ask him to forgive you. Tell him that you are sorry. You don't come to the altar, you know, and, and, and there's no remorse. Repentance must come without remorse. You are sorry. You are crying. You are shedding. You are telling him, God, have mercy. There are some people still out there, still contemplating. Please, we don't have enough time again. Please come. Tonight is your night. There's still room for My God, there is victory in the spirit. There is victory in the spirit. Walk out on that devil. Come, 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 come. There's enough room at the cross for you. Please come. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Saya bada la kaya. There is room at the cross, at the cross for you. Oh, oh. There is still room for more. There is room at the cross for you. Close your eyes. Repeat these prayers after me from the depth of your heart and speak it out loud. The Bible says that if you should believe with your heart the Lord Jesus and then confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. And once he saves you, don't even dwell on whatever happened a few hours ago before you came here. Whatever happened yesterday. No. No. For whosoever is in Christ is a new creation. All things are passed away. He said, Behold, all things have become new. He said, Lord Jesus, I can't hear you. Let God hear you. He said, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight as a sinner. But tonight, I've heard your word and I know that you love me. I come before you with repentance. I am sorry. I am sorry. He needs to hear it from your heart. I am sorry. Forgive me all my sins, all my mistakes, all my mess. I repent of all of it. And tonight, I make a decision to surrender my life to you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Remove my name from the book of death. Write my name in your book of life. Tonight, I cut off any covenant I had with the devil. I renounce any covenant I had with the devil. 
and I make a new covenant with Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me from the bondage of sin. I am now born again. I am now a child of God. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Thank you, precious Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for this miracle of salvation. Our hearts are full of gratitude for the harvest tonight to the glory of your holy name. I ask, Holy Spirit, unto your hands I commit all these ones, that you will uphold them, you will hold them strong by your spirit. You see, as many as believe in him, he gave them the power to be called the sons of God. Lord, give these ones such power to stand for you, that no adversity, no temptation, no trial will pull them away from you. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let your spirit envelop them. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can I hear a believing amen? Do we have a pepper? Do we, do we have? Okay, please give them pepper.